Welcome to the Walk Boldly with Jesus podcast. I am your host, Katherine Duggan. I created this podcast to inspire you to walk boldly in your Christian faith. Each weekday, I will talk about scripture and how these verses can relate to your everyday life. Spending time each day with the Word of God is a great way to fortify your faith. I'm so glad to have you along on this journey. Let's get started. The title of today's episode is Give, and it will be given to you. The scripture verse is Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. I think this is a great verse, and I think it is something to remember. I remember when I was young and I saw my mom writing out checks for the offertory at church. I thought she was not giving enough. Now remember, I said I was young. I would see her write a check for $5 or 10 or 15 And I thought that wasn't really a lot of money. Now when I look back, I can see that that actually was a lot she was putting into the basket. My parents had 11 children. I only have three boys who happen to be teenagers right now, and our grocery bill is so expensive. I can only imagine what it was like with 11 children. We also lived in a big house because we had so many children, and it was expensive to heat and keep the lights on. When I hear this story in Mark chapter 21, verses 41 to 44, I always think of that day in church when I thought my mom wasn't giving enough. Mark chapter 21, verses 41 to 44 says, Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts. But a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins, worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, This poor widow has put more money into the treasury than all of the others. The others gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all that she had to live on. My dad had a great job working for the state, and my mom stayed home to take care of us kids. Although there were a few times when she did try to work outside the home. For instance, she tried to take a third shift job at Frito-Lay, so that she could work while we were sleeping, and then my dad would pick her up on his way to work in the morning. Can you imagine that? My mom took care of us all day and then worked at night. The only reason she quit is because they had mandatory overtime. If your shift was over and they needed you to stay, you had to stay. That wouldn't work with my mom, as my dad needed to get to work and us kids needed to get to school. I honestly am not even sure when this was, so I'm not sure how many of us still lived at home, but at least the five youngest. Today, it's tough to make ends meet with a two-income household. I honestly don't know how they did it with one income. Actually, I do know how they did it, with a lot of prayer. Every time they realized they needed something and they didn't have enough money for it, they would pray and ask God how he wanted them to handle the situation. And God always showed up for them in a big way. They were obedient in putting money into the basket each week, even if it meant they didn't have enough money for other things. I was about to say they didn't worry, but I don't think that's true. I think they did worry, and yet they also trusted that God would provide. And you know what? He always did. I am sure I have told this story before, but in case you haven't heard it, my parents' friend asked them to watch their 10 kids because they had something important they had to do. My parents didn't even hesitate. They said yes. However, they were already worried because they didn't know how they were going to feed their own children, and now we just added 10 more to the mix. My parents prayed together and asked God to let them know what they should do. They told God if they just had some spaghetti They could feed all those people. No sooner had they finished their prayer than there was a knock at the door. 
Their neighbor had a bunch of extra food because their father had to move in suddenly and his dad had just gone grocery shopping before the move. And he and his wife had just gone grocery shopping before the dad moved in as well. There was nowhere to put this extra food. My parents graciously accepted. And when they were putting the food away, they realized there was plenty of spaghetti and sauce to go around. My parents praised God and thanked him for the wonderful surprise food that showed up. They were talking with each other and happened to say, if we only had some ground meat for the spaghetti, it would be perfect. I don't think they even prayed for this. I think they were just talking to each other. However, no sooner did that statement leave their lips than there was a knock at the door. A different neighbor had gone out hunting and brought home a lot of meat. They filled their freezer and their fridge with meat, and they still had meat left over. They wanted to know if my parents wanted it. Again, my parents graciously accepted, and they realized they had the ground meat they were looking for. It was so amazing. The Lord really is good. I think relying on God is something that seems foolish to a lot of people today. I remember when Tony and I were talking with neighbors one time, we were discussing the idea of how much we give to the church and how much we give to the giving campaign that the military has. I forget what it's called, but they did it every year. Everyone is expected to give something. I remember they were discussing how much we each thought was reasonable, and I explained how much my mom gave, even though most months it was hard to pay the bills. They thought that was crazy, or bad financial management, to give more than you could really afford. I wholeheartedly disagree with this. My parents were being obedient to the church and trying to give as much as they can. Some weeks, more than others, but they did what they could. If you ask me, there was no better way for them to spend that money. Remember what the verse above said? Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into our laps. For with the measure you use, It will be measured to you. My parents gave, and it was definitely giving back to them. I have heard the saying, God will not be outdone in generosity. Whatever you give to God will be returned, and then some. God did not give my parents back the exact amount they gave in church. He gave them more. Although they didn't have a lot of money, they never went without the essentials. God always sent people to help them when they needed it. Some days we would go outside and there would be a box of random things on our porch, like clothes or food or toys. My parents did their best to give God all they had, and he repaid them by providing for their needs. Are you giving all you can to the church or other charities? Are you being gracious and forgiving towards others? Are you giving them the patience they require? The verse above says, give and it will be given to you. Are you doing this? Are you giving? If you want God to give to you, you must give to others as well. Dear Heavenly Father, I ask you to bless all those listening to this podcast today. Lord, we ask you to open our hearts and to soften them to the idea of asking you how much we should give. We ask you to soften our hearts to the idea of not just giving out of abundance, but giving even if it stretches us a little bit. More importantly, thank you for giving. Help us to rely on you better. Help us to trust that you will provide for us, that we don't have to do everything ourselves. Lord, we thank you for this. We thank you for always providing for us. We thank you and we ask you all of this in accordance with your will and in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey to walk boldly with Jesus. I look forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. Remember, Jesus loves you and so do I. Have a blessed day.